was much, much harder than I anticipated, basically. The whole thing was, yeah. This is the state of our tent on the final day. Well, tomorrow's the final day, I suppose, of sleeping in the tent, but uh, what a mess. We are, we are all completely wrecked. We just don't care anymore. <laughs> but we're about to go running for the final time on Cape Wrath, day eight. Some of the lead runners are already going. We're just still getting ready. I came third last out of everyone yesterday. So that's how slowly I was going. That's your best day, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, it's time to go on the final day of the Cape Wrath Ultra. It's gonna take us a while, because um, I can't move very fast. It's only 24K, but definitely gotta just look after myself. Let's get the tracker in and go. Hello. Hi there. Woo! Right, away we go. This is day eight. Where do I go, David? I still lose. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Cheers, dude. Hi, Bridget. Well done. Enjoy. Survived your epic wobble on day three. And oh, done. yeah, we are. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thanks a lot. It's fantastic up there. From the moment I got injured on day seven, there was no denying that day eight was going to be a struggle. Thankfully, I'd managed to run the first half of the course last year when I was volunteering, so I knew the 12 kilometers to Sandwood Bay Beach was relatively easy going. However, I had no idea what was in store for me after that. Five kilometers into the last day of the Cape Wrath Ultra. Most of it's been this road, which I remember running on last year. So it's going to be this road, then there's a nice sandy path to take us to the beach. And only after the beach, I think, does it get a little bit more gnarly. The temperature is warmish, it's not hot, it's a bit clouded over. I still don't feel like I want to take my jumper off, although it might come to that actually in a minute. Leg is sore, really sore, but what can we do? Nothing, just have to get it done. Even in these early miles on the smooth tarmac road, I was moving very slowly and runners who started much later than me were already flying by, wishing me well, but secretly feeling glad they weren't in my position. Checkpoint one. I think we've just made it before the cutoff. <laughs> Cheers guys. Right, now we're on to a sandy bit um, that goes down to the beach. Seven kilometers down to the beach, that's ticking off some Ks, that's good. So we're only gonna have a few kilometers of possibly difficult terrain. Okay, so this is marginally depressing. I am going so slowly now because of my leg injury that literally everyone is coming past me um, and it's all, all the explorer runners so the runners who have dropped out of the main race and are doing the shorter course and they're all blasting past me really fast and then even you know some of the uh, runners who are doing the full course are, are still good on their feet and running running well but uh, oh my goodness I just cannot run at all I've taken some pain relief so Hopefully that will kick in in a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm down again, down to about 15 minute kilometers now. But you know, that's fine. It's, it's, we'll just get in when we get in. It's not the end of the world. It would have been nice to be able to run this in properly. And I mean, look at this, we're now approaching the beach. Lock there. And uh, this is the beach. So we'll be there in about five minutes. 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, this is so painful. I wonder how long I'm going to be out with this. Just, oh. If you've got an injury, guys, don't run on it. That's just such a bad idea. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? Yeah, good. We've made it to the beach. We are halfway through the final day 
of the Cape Wrath Ultra. 12 kilometers done, 12 kilometers to go. But do you know what? I am going in the water. Beautiful, isn't it? Can't drive down here. You can only hike down here from the car park. 7K back that way. Just chosen the wrong moment because the waves are really big. It's going when the waves are smaller. Just dies down a bit, doesn't it, after a while. But I'm gonna go in. Oh, that's good. Strong current though. Just need to be careful. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Whoa. Here we go again! <laughs> I need to go in the water to clean off now, I've got a sand all over me! One more quick go, one more quick go. Oh, that's better. When when there's no waves, it's better. I just went in at the wrong time. Oh. I can only apologise for the gratuitous nature of the footage you're currently being subjected to, but you've only got yourselves to blame. The six-pack is currently hidden by a special layer to protect me from the harsh Scottish climate, and the grey hair is because when you complain as much as I do, there has to be a silver lining. Once I had finally got moving again, the terrain very quickly went from smooth and runnable to an uneven, heathery mess, which, as has happened so often this week, was barely discernible as a path. I could just about cope with the ground before the beach. Once we got beyond Sandwood Bay, I was in trouble. I wasn't quite in last place, but it felt like it. I wasn't quite defeated, but I wasn't far off. One saving grace was that I wasn't chasing cutoffs. All I had to do was keep moving forward. I'm struggling with my foot. Literally 6K to go. One final climb, but my leg is absolutely killing me. Get it done. Just, it's gonna, just gonna take a long time. It's not pretty. So this is the final climb, the Cape Wrath Ultra 2024, day eight, and it's steep, it's not very long, about two or three hundred metres um, in elevation, so usually this wouldn't take too long to do, but in the state I am in, gosh, the state I'm in, it's going to take a little while, but I'm not last. I'm not in last place. All like the, the all the main runners and all the explorer runners have all come past me. Most of them, just a few left behind. I am dragging my sorry foot up this hill. If it kills me. Just caught my first glimpse of the lighthouse up ahead. You won't be able to see it, it's too far away, but it's four kilometers to go over there. I'm gonna get in about 2.30 in the afternoon, just still clambering over heather and gorse bushes and all sorts of stuff to get down the hill now. We've climbed up the longest climb of the day. No way I was going to quit today. No, not after what I've been through this week. Pretty valley at the end here. 3k to go. Take me another hour. 
The closer I got, the more I started to reflect on what we'd been through over the past eight days. We often talk about journeys in running, and yes, it's about the scenery and the physical terrain, battling exhaustion or injury to make it to the end. But the real journey is more cognitive and introspective, and one which forces us to confront who we truly are. 400 kilometres of wilderness affords a lot of time to contemplate the joy and pain in your life. And sometimes, just for a moment, at the end of it all, the mask falls away and we are raw and exposed, childlike almost, in our fragility. There it is. Like it's been such a long journey. <laughs> I haven't cried at the end of an ultra for ages. It's been so long, I know, but I'm fine. Travelled 400 kilometres from the foot of Ben Nevis in Fort William all the way up to the tip of Scotland at the Cape Wrath Lighthouse. And we have 200 metres to go, and we're going to finish. I can't, I can't believe why this is making me so emotional. It's only, it's only running, isn't it? I mean, I want to make my family proud. I like to make my family proud and there's not a lot I can do to make my family proud. But I can do this. I can finish this. Come here with me. Three, two, one. Away we go, everybody. Cape Wrath Ultra. This is what you live for, isn't it? This is what you do things, these things for because it's just awesome when you get to be in these places that you would never be otherwise. It just feels endless and my feet are hurting. I'm hungry. But whether I go out tomorrow, I seriously doubt at the moment. No aid stations here, you know. No coffee, no latte, no ice creams. No sympathy, get on with it. Oh, I tell you what, we're in such a better mood than we were yesterday. Day five, Cape Wrath Ultra complete in just under seven hours. Worth it just for that. Absolutely stunning. Now that's what you call going in a river. Look at this panoramic view. My leg is done in and the ground underneath is horrendous. Well, but uh, oh my goodness, I just cannot run at all. Oh, that was cool. Here we go again. I long for scenes where man hath never trod, a place where woman never smiled or wept, there to abide with my Creator, God, and sleep as I in childhood sweetly slept, untroubling and untroubled where I lie, the grass below above the vaulted sky. I hadn't been finished long when tentmate Jay crossed the line, injured, exhausted and just as emotionally fragile as so many of us are when we've been stripped of our defences and dragged through the darkest recesses of our own brains. But there's very little a coffee can't sort out and it wasn't long before we were in the cafe trying to come to terms with what we'd just achieved whilst eating free soup. And soon after that we were on the bus back to camp. So we're on the bus uh, away from Cape Wrath Lighthouse now, uh, 
Apparently we have to get two buses because the road's been knocked out. So one of the buses is on, is on the other side of the uh, destroyed piece of road and this bus is on the other side and they can't do anything about it. So uh, we have to get off one bus and onto another bus and then down to a ferry. And I don't know if we walk back from the ferry to the camp or there's another bus from the ferry to the camp. We walk back, there you go. It's not that far from the edge of the water, so... It's a small hill. Yes, little hill. <laughs> we've been abandoned. So we've got the bus from Cape Raff Lighthouse. And it's taken about half an hour to drive down here. And we've been left at this boffy. If you've never been in a boffy before, I'll show you around because it's quite exciting. Uh, so this, if, you, if you're going hiking or anything like that and you need somewhere to stay overnight, you can kind of rent these boffies. So let's go and look inside. So we're all dumped here waiting for another bus. So here's the lounge. Two beds, two beds in the other end. People need to get Little fireplace. And then there's a there's a loo just there, and then this is the kitchen. See Chris constantly working, editing his photos as we speak. <laughs> He's just playing solitaire. <laughs> Oh my leg is absolutely killing me. So we're, it's it's quite um, remote. I'm in the middle of nowhere in this little bothy. I mean, they're very basic, aren't they? You know, it's 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 bog standard. Just here we are. Oh look, there's three TVs in a skybox. I guess if you're coming to stay here, you'd you'd have your sleeping bag and everything in your rucksack anyway. So there's no bedding or anything. There's no there's no tea or coffee facilities. It's just basic. Right, we've been abandoned again. So the bus did eventually come to take us from the Bothy, and now we're on the jetty, waiting for the ferry. Our camp is literally about a mile over there. Should we swim for it? That's, this is really sad. We've just got on the ferry, but this lim limited room, we've just had to leave three from us standing on the dock. We all feel really guilty. But also secretly kind of glad it wasn't us. Catching the ferry across the Carl of Duness is yet another iconic moment of the many iconic moments in the Cape Wrath Ultra. And despite being tired and broken, I tried to savour it all. After crossing the water, it's a short walk up to camp where you cross one more finish line and hand in your tracker for the final time. We arrived in camp just as the official group photo was being taken, so I took my place alongside the other finishers of both the full Cape Wrath Ultra and the Explorer, alongside the volunteers who make this event possible, and the Ure event staff who ensure this mammoth undertaking is managed and run with impeccable efficiency. Have you handed your tracker in? <laughs> In the evening, I was called up to the stage along with the other 54 finishers of the full distance and the 48 finishers of the Explorer. The full distance had an attrition rate of 49% and I finished 39th overall in 75 hours 37 minutes, having originally targeted a place in the top 20. By contrast, the winner, Danny Smith, finished in 50 hours 28 minutes and used that extra time in camp to write poetry, some of which he recited to us that night. And if I were on the shore of Moidart with you, for whom my care is new, I would put up in a synthesis of love for you, the ocean and the sand, drop in grain. And if we were on Mole Stenchel Staffin, where the unhappy surgeon... Time to pack up, time to go home. We're going to get on coaches and we're going to drive five hours down to Fort William to get back to the football club there. Thank you so much for watching this series. I've really enjoyed putting it together for you. And if you've made it this far, please do think about subscribing to the channel and I will see you on the start line next time.